Come, baby. Enjoy this great game. The San Francisco Giants have a very deep history that includes some of the greatest players to ever play the game. Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Juan Marichal, Buster Posey, Barry Bonds. The list goes on and on and on. But I found myself wondering, could I put together a very solid 26-man roster of former San Francisco Giants who only played one season in the orange and black? And I put together this roster, and damn, if it doesn't look impressive. Before I get into it, I want to let you know, please let me know in the comment section if I've forgotten anybody. I will update the article that's also on my website at humbabybaseball.com. So without further ado, let's get into this list. I've got a bench, I've got a bullpen, I've got a rotation, and I've got a starting lineup. You won't believe some of the names on this roster. The only criteria for getting on this roster is you had to have spent only one season or less, but at least one game with the San Francisco Giants. But I'm not judging these players based on that season, rather on their career as a whole. So just looking for the best overall players as far as their major league careers are concerned, who also spent some time with the Giants no more than one season. And as we go to the bench, we'll start with the catcher, A.J. Perzinski. AJ found a ton of success during his 19-year career, especially with the White Sox. He ended up with an impressive 280 career batting average, 180 home runs, and he spent a season in San Francisco that was very difficult. He seemed to butt heads with the front office and teammates. Fans didn't appreciate him and his ability to consistently hit into double plays. I'm still pissed about it, but he had a great career and deserves to be on this roster as a San Francisco Giant one and done who had a fantastic career. Moving on to another catcher, Damon Berryhill. I'll always remember Damon Berryhill from watching the Chicago Cubs on WGN. And he actually had a nice 10-year career, mostly as a backup catcher. He had a game-winning three-run home run for the Braves in Game 1 of the 92 World Series. As a giant, he hit 257 with three home runs in his final big league career in 1997. Up next on the bench is a backup infielder for this roster, Scooter Jeanette. Scooter Jeanette will always be remembered for one amazing day when he crushed four home runs in a single game in 2017 for the Reds, tying an MLB record. And he also smashed 27 bombs that year in total, hit over 20 the next year, but he never really maintained such excellence. And then the Giants picked him up at the trade deadline in 2019. He hit just 234 before being designated for assignment. But Scooter Jeanette, pretty big time name. And I think also shout out to Ryan Terrio. That's the other guy I was considering. Next up, one of my favorites, Eric Davis. Many people forget that Eric Davis wore a Giants uniform. He hit 205 with four home runs in his final big league year with the Giants. The rest of his career was much more impressive. He hit 269, 282 home runs, three gold gloves, and is mostly remembered with the Cincinnati Reds. Next up, we got Deion Sanders, prime time. A huge pickup for the Giants in 1995. He helped put a charge in this team with an RBI double in his debut. He ended up hitting 285 in his only year in the orange and black. Obviously, he's remembered as an Atlanta Brave and an Atlanta Falcon as well in the NFL. Just one of the most famous athletes of all time. Next up, we got Dusty Baker. It feels really weird to put Dusty Baker on a list of one and done San Francisco Giants because he wore a San Francisco Giants uniform forever, but that was mostly as a manager. As far as his playing career goes, he only played one season in San Francisco. He was a two-time All-Star and Gold Glover that Giants signed in 1984. He hit 292 with just three home runs. But he'll mostly be remembered as a manager, of course. From 1993 to 2002, he managed the Giants, helping them get to the World Series in 2002. Unfortunately, Giants couldn't win it that year, but he's still trying now as the manager of the Astros. The last bench player, I got outfielder Adam Duvall. This was a young and talented kid with power, and the Giants decided to ship him off to Cincinnati in 2015 in exchange for Mike Leak, who pitched in San Francisco just long enough to also make this roster. So we'll get to him in a little bit. But Duvall, he immediately impressed in Cincinnati. He crushed 33 bombs in 2016, selected to the All-Star team, invited to the Home Run Derby. And just last year in 2021, he drove in over 100 runs and smashed 38 home runs for the Braves and Marlins. He now has a career 151 home runs, only three of which came with the Giants. I'd say that that trade 
was an epic fail. Now we're going to move on to the bullpen, and I mentioned Mike Leak. He was a giant for part of 2015 when he came over in exchange for Adam Duvall, who would go on to do big things, like I said, for the Reds and Braves. Leak didn't do much. He was leaking oil when he got here. He went 2-5, and five, and he did have a solid 10-year career. Other than that, he compiled 105 wins. He won a gold glove. Very solid career. Mike Leak is a really good pitcher, but with the Giants, very forgettable. Next up is one of the most memorable relief pitchers of the 80s, El Gasolino Juan Berenguer, who could light up the radar gun before a time when nearly every relief pitcher lights up a radar gun. But he is mostly remembered as a Minnesota twin, helping them win a World Series in 1987. And his time with the Giants came just prior. In 86, he was 2-3 and three with a 2.7 ERA. Next up in the bullpen, Jamie Wright. Wright was selected in the first round of the 93 draft by the Rockies. He ended up pitching 19 years in the big leagues, both as a starter and reliever. Ended up throwing over 2,000 innings in his career with a 4.81 ERA. Very nice career, but he wasn't too great for the Giants in 2006. Made 34 appearances, 21 starts, and 6-10 and record, 5.19 ERA. Now for the setup man. Mike Stanton. Stanton had a very impressive 19-year career, during which time he made a name for himself with the Braves and the Yankees. He saved 27 games for the 1993 Braves, a team that ended up winning 104 games to take the West that year over the Giants, who won 103. He would go on to play for those Giants during the twilight of his career in 2006, and he had a decent year going 4-2, 3.09 ERA, and 8 saves for San Francisco. But now we're gonna get into the big names. It's time for the closer, and it is gonna be none other than Rich Goose Gossage. Goose Gossage was one of the most intimidating closers in baseball history, finishing off his career with 310 saves, nine all-star selections, and of those 310 saves, just four came with San Francisco in 1989 when he made 31 appearances out of the bullpen for the Giants. He did in the year with a very respectable 2.68 ERA. And now we'll get to the starting lineup and the rotation for the one and done San Francisco Giants. I got leading off in left field, Andrew McCutcheon. This is a five-time All-Star, former MVP, appeared in a Giants uniform 130 times in 2018, and he brought some exciting moments such as a walk-off home run against the rival Dodgers. Unfortunately, the Giants were not contenders that year, and he was shipped off to New York. Batting second, for now, I got third baseman Chris Bryant. It is still possible he could play again for the Giants. But for now, he is a free agent. Looks like he'll be signing elsewhere. I'm going to include Bryant on this list. He hit 262 with seven bombs down the stretch for the Giants in 2021, helping them win a franchise record 107 games. As for his career, Bryant is already a four-time All-Star. He's got an MVP. He's got a Rookie of the Year. He is on a Hall of Fame track right now. Chris Bryant at third base. Batting third in center field, I got Duke Snyder. This is the first name that came to my mind for this experiment. This is a Hall of Fame outfielder, eight-time All-Star with the Dodgers, played in just 91 games for the Giants in his farewell season, hitting just 210 with four home runs. One of the greatest of all time. Next up in the cleanup spot, I got him playing first base, even though he wasn't typically a first baseman, but he did play quite a few games at first, and it's Joe Carter, but I need the other outfield spots for outfielders. But the great Joe Carter, we're talking five-time All-Star, two-time World Series champion, who finished his career in the city by the bay, hitting 295 with just seven home runs in 1998. You'll notice a pattern that Giants tend to sign some of the greatest for their last year, when they're just barely hanging on the Giants go ahead and bring them aboard. Probably not the best strategy, but still cool that some of these guys played in a Giants uniform. Hitting fifth, I got as the DH. I'm gonna use the DH, sorry, but it's coming to the National League. We gotta get used to it. DH, Carlos Beltran. In 2011, the Giants were trying to repeat as World Series champions, and they picked up Beltran at the trade deadline. And he hit okay, he hit 323 with seven bombs. He made some nice defensive plays, but the Giants fell apart and they failed to make the playoffs. Beltran went elsewhere. He is a rookie of the year. He's got nine all-star selections, three gold gloves. He should definitely be a Hall of Fame candidate. Batting sixth, I got right fielder Daryl Strawberry. This is a rookie of the year, eight-time All-Star, three-time World Series champion, one of the most famous ball players ever. 
Daryl Strawberry. He was a polarizing, but he was amazing. He was awesome, amazing power, and he did play for the Giants in 1994, but he wasn't that great. He hit just 239 with four bombs, but I'll always remember watching him in batting practice at Candlestick Park. It was absolutely amazing. Seventh, we have catcher Gary Carter, 11-time All-Star and a Hall of Famer, mostly with the Mets and Expos, but he did make his stop by San Francisco in 1990. He hit 254 with nine home runs. I'm so glad Gary Carter played in San Francisco. He's one of my favorites of all time. Awesome human being, rest in peace. Gary Carter, one of my favorites. Hitting eighth, and I had a lot of trouble finding a starting shortstop, so please let me know in the comment section if there's a better selection and I can update the article. But right now, I've got Jose Vizcaino. The Giants have been so steady at shortstop, there's not a lot of one and dones that I could find. We had Omar Vizquel for a while, Royce Clayton for a while. Obviously, Brandon Crawford's been there for the longest. But Jose Vizcaino was very solid. Any big-time baseball fan, especially going back to the 80s, you probably know the name Jose Vizcaino. He spent 18 years in the big leagues, 64 games for the Giants in 2006. And at second base, batting ninth, another very difficult position to find very many options because the Giants have been very solid at second base as well. Going back to Robbie Thompson, Jeff Kent, seems like there's always somebody there at second base. But he's got to be on it. No list could be complete as far as one and done Giants without the famous, or should I say infamous, Dan Ugla. No! who was a massive slugger from the mid-2000s to the early 2010s for the Marlins and the Braves. He consistently would crush over 30 home runs per year, and the Giants picked him up in 2019. I was so excited. See if we could harness some of that amazing power. Instead, he couldn't get a single hit. He went 0 for 11, six strikeouts. He made multiple errors, booting routine ground balls consistently. He was so bad that he was good. Moving on to the starting rotation. And this was actually difficult to figure out what order to put him in. These top four guys in this rotation are all either Hall of Famers or should be Hall of Famers. This is an absolutely amazing rotation. I got the big unit as the ace. This is tough because you're gonna see some of the big names as well, but I decided to go with the big unit. Randy Johnson, a first ballot Hall of Famer, spent most of his years dominating batters with the Seattle Mariners and the Arizona Diamondbacks, a little bit with the New York Yankees, finishing his career in San Francisco, going eight and six in 2009, and he also won his 300th game in a Giants uniform. Second in the rotation, easily this guy could be the ace, and it's Warren Spahn, 17-time All-Star, that's right, 17-time All-Star, one of the greatest pitchers in the history of the game. And it was in 1965, you guessed it, his final year in the big leagues. This is a pattern. He went 3-4 and four with a 3.39 ERA for the San Francisco Giants. Up next, and yes, this is a very lefty-heavy rotation, but it's Steve Carlton, 10-time All-Star who won not one, not two, not three, four Cy Youngs. In 1986, he played for the Giants. He wasn't so fantastic, though, going one and three with a 5.1 ERA. Up next, fourth in the rotation. This was a must. Could not forget this man. This is one of the best pitchers of all time who's not in the Hall of Fame. I think he should be. Oral Hershiser. He is a Dodger. Dodger for life. But... He went to the orange and black for one season. 1998, he went 11 and 10 with a 4.41 ERA. Not the greatest year, not terrible, but he had an amazing career. I believe it's Hall of Fame worthy. Oral Hershiser is the man, and I got him fourth in the rotation. Now, fifth in the rotation, I couldn't really find very many options. I decided to go with Latroy Hawkins. And, you know, this dude had an insane career, 21-year career. And even though he didn't make any all-star teams, he didn't win any major awards, no Cy Youngs or anything like that, but he was always solid. And if you hang around the big leagues for 21 years, you're doing something right. Unfortunately, with the Giants, wasn't that great. One in four in 2005. But Latroy Hawkins, shout out to him, 21-year career and, uh, you know, a lot of, ups and downs for him, but Latroy Hawkins, I decided to go ahead and throw in the rotation as the fifth starter. And that is my current
current 26 man roster i will be happy to update this not say you know do not cuss me out in the comments if i forgot somebody i did as much research as i could i, I used i tried to think and use my memory i jumped into old roster i looked at every single roster going back to 1965 trying to identify one and dones who had great careers and i'm sure there are better selections here a lot of them are modern because obviously my you know it's easier to remember more recent things but you know there are names that you couldn't have forget like eric davis can't forget him i think that he's one of the all time obviously joe carter obviously uh, uh goose gossage come on now oral hershey's are just amazing but it doesn't get any better than randy johnson warren spawn duke snyder gary carter it's absolutely amazing how many all-time greats played in a Giants uniform and a lot of people don't even realize it because they were here just so quickly it was just a flash but uh it's a, it's awesome to go back and, and remember some of these names so you guys have a fantastic day thank you for checking out this video hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe check out that join button down below if you want to help out hum baby baseball on a monthly basis i would really appreciate it you guys are awesome we'll talk to you next time when the giants come to town it's bye bye baby every time the chips are down it's bye bye baby history's in the making at oracle park